Am I the antagonist for asking my housemate to put their puppy in puppy daycare on my days off? Six months ago, my housemate got a six-week-old puppy, a Labrador, with separation anxiety. She couldn't even go for a shower because the glass separating them would cause him to howl. He's gotten way better since, but because he's young, his bark is so high-pitched it's like a knife to my brain. On top of that, he's also a puppy, so he destroys everything he can get his hands on. I've lost multiple plants because of him, a couple of shoes, he's ripped apart almost every fly screen door window he can reach, the drain pipes, etc. Through all these things, I've been the one at home, and she's been at work. I've been the one dealing with the messes he makes. I've been putting up with it for six months, but this week he broke through the fence and got into the neighbor's yard. I had to spend the rest of the day with him on his leash. I couldn't do any of the things I'd planned because I couldn't leave him alone. He'd either run away or destroy everything. I reached my breaking point two days ago and sent her a message asking her to do something about it. Maybe send him to puppy daycare on Monday and Tuesday, my days off from work, when she's working. He's gone before and absolutely loved it. Except she's also pregnant and money is tight. Today, she, 34 years old, her baby daddy, approximately 38 years old, and I, 24 years old, sat down. It started with me calmly saying all I have here, to which she responded by saying that he's still just a puppy and he'll grow out of it. I reiterated that I understand that. But the issues are now, and something needs to be done now, not when he becomes an adult. She just kept repeating that he'll grow out of it. From there it went downhill to the point where the baby daddy and I were snapping at each other. He said I'm blowing things out of proportion and need to suck it up. That when I agreed to let my housemate have a dog, I agreed to him destroying everything. That me not realizing this would happen is just me being naive, and taking responsibility for her dog when she's at work is necessary because I just need to take it for the team. I told him he wasn't listening to what I was saying. I don't want them to get rid of the puppy or anything. I just want the puppy and his messes not to be my responsibility on my days off work. Meanwhile, my housemate didn't say a thing after that first comment. She sat there while he snapped at me for half an hour, and she didn't even look at me while I was sobbing, frustrated tears. All I was asking for was for them to understand what I'm feeling and try to come to a compromise we can all be okay with. Instead, I was told to just suck it up and stop being so childish. Was I asking too much? Not the antagonist. It sounds like you're effectively being taken advantage of, providing them with a puppy care service, and given that she's expecting, this dynamic sounds like it has a high chance of worsening. Sounds like it might be best to cut losses and move out to a place without this specific sort of baggage. The power dynamic sucks, you are 24 and she is 10 years older, so she thinks she has the upper hand. What happens when the baby arrives? Are they moving away? Are they expecting you to babysit for free? Move out, they mean trouble. Would I be the antagonist if I don't act excited for my sister-in-law being pregnant? My sister-in-law Lisa, who is 22 years old, told me, who is 27 years old, and my wife Sarah, who is 25 years old, that she was pregnant yesterday. Apparently she is six weeks along. I left the room when she mentioned she was having a baby, and Sarah congratulated her in a neutral manner. Sarah was not overly excited, which made the conversation awkward. We are seeing them for Mother's Day, which they initially weren't planning to attend, but now they are. I feel they may make the day all about themselves. Lisa has not seen my reaction towards her pregnancy, but on Sunday, I will not act excited or happy for her. Some background. Last year, Lisa announced she was pregnant at four weeks. She has a history of irregular periods, and her husband Dan, who is 25 years old, wants seven children. Lisa thought she had a miscarriage, which was later confirmed to just be her period. She shared this miscarriage with everyone, even though the doctor's tests showed she was never pregnant. Lisa uses this miscarriage to manipulate people. Both Lisa and Dan have been unkind to me and Sarah. Lisa and Dan are deeply religious, and they hold homophobic and racist beliefs. When Sarah and I got married two years ago, Lisa refused to attend the wedding due to their religious beliefs. They have also expressed to us their disapproval of our marriage. Lisa has been deceitful, manipulative and hostile towards us. I feel conflicted about being expected to show excitement for Lisa's pregnancy when she has treated us poorly. My mother-in-law has asked for everyone to be kind to each other, but I struggle to be happy for Lisa and Dan, who have been disrespectful towards me, Sarah and our family. Would I be in the wrong if I don't act happy and excited for Lisa and Dan's pregnancy? Not the antagonist. Seriously, Yabuni TA if you showed your support by buying a rainbow onesie for the baby. It's very gender neutral and a great way to stand by your beliefs. And if your mother-in-law is pushing you to hang out with homophobes, that's totally not cool. Why keep people in your life who don't respect who you are? Just take your ML out for dinner separately and don't even bother with the drama on Mother's Day. Am I the antagonist for not reimbursing my child's other parent for their sleepaway camp fees? Our 8-year-old son is going to his first sleepaway camp next month. Since my ex and I have the same income, we do not give or receive child support but instead, we each pay for different expenses. For example, I pay for his sitter and she pays for his extracurricular activities like camp. Sleepaway camp was so expensive that they don't even list the cost online. 
Essentially, his camp and sports cost more than his sitter, so I agreed to reimburse her for the difference between that and childcare, which so far amounts to $150. I said I would give it to her today when we see each other at our son's swim lesson. I was on my way home after a short business trip, and my son was with his mom. I received a call from the sitter, who informed me that my son's mom had come home intoxicated and was passed out on the couch. The sitter felt uncomfortable leaving our son with her. Our son had not had dinner, and Friday is bath night, which I usually take care of. Since I was on my way back and unable to do anything, I asked if the sitter could stay and watch my son. Unfortunately, he couldn't as his place was quite far. I then proposed that he take my son to his place, feed him, bathe him, and put him to bed, after which I would pick him up and take him to my house, where I have him for the next two weeks anyway. The sitter agreed to this arrangement but inquired about payment. I said I would compensate him for the hours worked, and he suggested an extra $150 in cash if he was paid that way for the overnight stay. I agreed to this. I arrived back in town at 3 a.m. and picked up my son at 4 a.m. I texted my ex about the sitter. When I saw her at our son's swim meet, she admitted to drinking excessively at her office party and apologized to the sitter. Later, she asked me for the $150 for the summer camp reimbursement. I explained that I used it to pay the sitter for taking care of Ryan overnight since she was unable to do it herself. She argued that this was unfair and that we were not settled. I countered that we were indeed squared as we both contributed the same amounts for childcare and camp, as per our agreement. She insisted that I had promised to reimburse her and that the decision to have the sitter care for Ryan overnight was mine, making me responsible for compensating the sitter. Frustrated, I told her to deal with it. Not the antagonist. It's pretty audacious for her to still ask for the $150 when she came home wasted to the point that the sitter felt uncomfortable leaving. I mean, what did she expect you to do when she got that drunk and left your child unattended? You already split costs evenly, and paying for the emergency sitter was fair considering the circumstances. She clearly needs to learn accountability and be more responsible. And seriously, $150 is a bargain for what the sitter did to cover for her irresponsibility. She's just thinking about money, not the well-being of your child. Am I the antagonist for telling my family to shut up, get over themselves, and to accept that I never wanted my child to have the names they like? My wife, 25 years old, and I, 26 years old, welcomed our son Callum into the world just over a week ago. I had expected our son's name wouldn't be a favorite among my family, but I had believed and hoped they would just love us enough to accept that the name isn't one of the more vintage, old-timey names my family loves. However, they expressed their dislike for the name immediately and were asked to leave by me because my wife was in recovery and didn't need to deal with their negativity. They called me up the next day and asked why we had chosen a name that was so different from the rest of the family. I told them we went with a name we both loved and felt would work for our son his entire life. My family told me Callum is not the kind of name a person should wear into adulthood. They claimed it ages terribly because it sounds like a little boy's name. I informed them that Callum is a well-established and long-used name, just not in the way they prefer names to be. They argued that Callum does not compare to the names my nieces and nephews have or that my siblings have. I mentioned that I used to have another name and changed it at 18. So before I get too carried away, I should say that the types of names my family likes are Reginald, Harold, Desmond, Bartholomew, Maximilian Clarence, and my old name Herbert. Girls' names follow the same old school style. My family loves that. I'm okay with that. I wasn't satisfied with my old name and changed it, and I didn't want a name for my son that fit with them. I told my family as they were complaining to me that we had decided and the name was not changing, so they should adjust to it. They were silent for a day, and then they got back in touch to say they could not bring themselves to accept this and that, I should really consider why they love the names they do. They said I damned myself when I changed my name, which is now Jamie, that I shouldn't do that to my son. When I didn't budge, they declared they would talk to my wife. I firmly told them there was no way they were bothering my wife with their issues when she's newly postpartum. We got into a fight, and I told them to stop calling if they couldn't let it go. They showed up yesterday to see our son again and I wasn't going to let them inside, but my wife, who knows what's been going on, thought maybe seeing Callum again would calm them down. It didn't. They started on the name issue again, and they did attempt to go through my wife, which is when I may have stepped over the line. I told them to stop and get over themselves about the name because my wife and I love it, and we're not changing it for them. They need to accept that I never wanted my son or any kids I'd have to have names they like. I reminded them they knew this from the time I went to the effort and cost to change my own name. I also told them they had gone too far trying to pester my wife after being warned not to. They said I didn't need to be so rude to get my point across, but I believe I did. However, I'm also doubting if I went too far. Am I the asshole? Am I the antagonist? Not the antagonist. You tried being polite and it didn't work, so clearly you did in fact need to be rude to get them to back off. Honestly, I don't even understand their complaint. Callum definitely has an old school vibe to it. You and your wife are the only two people who get to pick your son's name. If your family can't accept and use Callum's name, then tell them they won't have a relationship with him. I would make this my hill to die on. What the hell is wrong with your family? First, their names are so old-fashioned. 
Talking to them I'd feel like I was in a BBC period piece. They knew you changed your name, thank God, and should have been preparing for this moment since then. Why burden your son with a name that you hated? They knew it was going to happen and they've been badgering you anyway. It's your child, they have no right to argue with your choice of names. Maybe you will start a trend. I can't believe all your cousins love those names either, they're just too afraid to speak up. It's also not right that they hassled your wife right after giving birth, but it sounds like she was expecting it anyway. No matter how much you abuse them, they're gonna come back, so I doubt you alienated them. Your response to them during that last visit should have been, well, you don't have to be so rude as to keep bringing up a subject that I've told you was closed. Not the antagonist, and I don't think you went too far. I mean, how many times do you have to say no before they will take it as your final answer? Probably a couple more. Congratulations on the birth of your son Callum. Am I the antagonist for refusing to pay for the full night and pointing out a pattern? I live with my partner and one thing I've started noticing is that she will regularly suggest days out, dates or trips away, but then if we plan it out she'll complain about actually being short of money so she doesn't think she can afford to go. She'll expect me to offer to pay for most things while we are away. A couple of times doesn't bother me, but it's starting to become more frequent. An example is this week we had a nice restaurant booked to go to, then my girlfriend decides to buy some new clothes and furniture. Once she bought that, she then said she can't afford the meal, so I'd either have to pay or we'd have to cancel. Another example is next month I am getting a pay rise at work, so I decided to take a month to treat myself instead of saving any money. I plan to take my girlfriend out for a nice meal, and we are going on a double date with my friend and his girlfriend in a nearby city. I have paid for the hotel and travel costs, and told my girlfriend I'll be getting our meal when we're there, so all she'll need is money for drinks. She said this was fine. Now she's saying she thinks I'll need to pay for the full night since she's seeing friends next month and has other things to pay for. I told her no, and her response was just that we'll have to cancel the night then. She's also started mentioning the amount of money I'm planning to spend next month, and keeps asking if I'm going to get her a treat or a present, etc. I point out that I am taking her for a meal and a night away, and she just changes the subject. She got angry and told me I was having a go at her for nothing, and that I was wrong with what I was accusing her of. She said it's just a coincidence, and that I'm out of order for accusing her. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay for the full night and for pointing out a pattern? Not the antagonist. It's important to have open and honest conversations about finances in a relationship. If your partner is expecting you to constantly cover expenses without making any effort to contribute, it could be a red flag. You deserve to be with someone who is financially responsible and respects your boundaries. Making it clear that you won't be paying for everything going forward is a necessary step in setting healthy boundaries in the relationship. Remember, it's okay to prioritize your own financial well-being and not feel guilty about it. Am I the antagonist for not wanting to share a personal-sized pizza with three other people? This is my first time posting anything, and I'm on mobile so unsure if I'm doing it right. I, female 35, am gluten-free, celiac, and have been for over half of my life. My husband, male, 35, is not. We had two friends stopping by for dinner who are also not gluten-free. My husband suggested we get pizza and mentioned to me that one of the friends only eats chicken as far as meat goes, so I should factor that into my order. I said, well that doesn't really affect me since I wasn't planning on sharing, but noted, I'll see what options they have for her. He asked why I didn't want to share, and I said, the gluten-free pizzas are basically personal pizzas, and I regularly eat the whole thing when we order it. Am I supposed to offer half of mine to other people when I can't eat what they are eating? He wouldn't hear me at all and said if I didn't want to share, I could pay for my pizza myself. I don't really care about paying for it myself, but the idea that I'm supposed to give away some of my dinner when I can't eat what other people are eating is stupid to me. It's not like we are ordering every pizza gluten-free. It just doesn't make sense. They eat my food, but I can't eat their food. I can understand the principle of offering, but one gluten-free pizza from this place is only enough for one person. If we were getting multiple gluten-free ones, I'd absolutely share, but they got two larges for the three of them. He continued to go on about how ungrateful I was being and said some other stupid stuff before I told him to go away and went upstairs. I ended up just going upstairs and not eating or seeing them at all. I came downstairs later and he had ordered me a gluten-free pizza and said from across the room, Are you ready for your grateful free pizza? You need to have a better attitude about things that aren't yours in the future. I didn't reply or eat the pizza. I was already heating something else up and hadn't noticed the pizza, but I will eat it later because I'm pregnant and starving all the time. Just for the record, this has happened before several years ago where we ordered pizza and only one gluten-free for me, and it arrived, and everyone thought mine looked super good. I don't order regular pepperoni tomato sauce, so the four other people, husband included, took over half of my pizza before I even got a bite. It pissed me off because I then didn't have enough food, and they still had plenty plus pieces of mine. So perhaps this is a sore subject for me. Again, I'm also pregnant, though this would still bother me if I weren't. Am I the jerk for being ungrateful? Not the antagonist. Your husband is so inconsiderate and thoughtless, especially given your dietary restriction and pregnancy. It's ridiculous that he assumes you should share food that meets your specific needs. 
Ordering extra gluten-free pizzas would be the logical solution, but his behavior is so immature and selfish. You deserve better, especially during this important time in your life. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.